What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am your distinguished Professor John Walter Crewall, and today we are going to be going over the top 10 cards from Darkness Ablaze. But first, the honorable mentions. The first Pokemon card of Darkness Ablaze that is not quite good enough for the top 10 but still needs an honorable mention is Galarian Stunfisk V. Now Galarian Stunfisk V with a very cool ability and a very cool attack. Metal Skin is the ability this Pokemon's max HP is increased by 20 for every metal energy attached to it. You can easily see how you can get out of control in the amount of HP that this Galarian Stunfisk can have. Trap Bite is the attack for two colorless energy, can be powered up with a welder or a couple of attachments, does 60 damage, and says if this Pokemon is damaged by an attack during your opponent's next turn, put 12 damage on the opponent's active Pokemon. So that is a very, very interesting attack and something that we've seen in the past in the likes of Turtonator GX. With all the gust in the post-rotation format, like Boss's Orders, Great Catcher, and Pokemon Catcher, it's hard to see Galarian Stunfisk really making that big of a uh, contribution to the meta, but it's still a card to watch out for, and that's why I have it in the honorable mentions. Our second honorable mention is Toughness Cape. Toughness Cape is a great new tool card from the Darkness Ablaze expansion. And it says, when this Pokemon is attached to a basic Pokemon, that Pokemon gets plus 50 HP. This is the highest boosted HP that we've seen from any tool card in the past. This is a card that should see a ton of play in certain decks. However, it just doesn't work with the VMAX Pokemon. And since this format should revolve around these evolutions, these VMAX Pokemon, I have to leave Toughness Cape out of the top 10. Rounding out the honorable mention list is Salamence VMAX. Now, Salamence VMAX sports 320 health for a VMAX Evolved Pokemon. That's right in that wheelhouse there. Two attacks. Twin Sonic, this attack does 40 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Could be on the bench. Could be the active. Max Wing for four energy does 240 damage during your next turn. This Pokemon cannot use Max Wing. So a little bit of a difficulty there in being having to reset to the bench to use Max Wing over and over. But Twin Sonic, with the powerful energy that is coming out, can set up knockouts on Jirachis, can set up knockouts on opponents of VMAX Pokemon or their big basics, and then Max Wing can come in and swing for the heavy numbers that you need to hit. Unfortunately, since the Max Wing attack has this clause that you need to go to the bench, and it is an evolved Pokemon, and it takes four energy to power up, I have to leave this Salamence VMAX off of the top 10, but coming in, rounding out the honorable mentions. So here we are. We are at the top 10 cards from Darkness Ablaze. Number 10 on the list is Hoopa. Now, Hoopa is a very, very interesting card that I like for a lot of reasons, uh, and it is very similar to Zapdos of the past that has seen an insane amount of success. So, Hoopa with 120 health, Dark Pokemon, Assault Gate for one Darkness Energy. It says, if this Pokemon wasn't moved from your bench to the active spot during your turn, this attack does nothing. And this attack isn't affected by weakness. So, very similar. You can see the parallels to the Zapdos card. Basically, what you need to do with this Hoopa is be able to move it from the bench to the active, and you can do that in one of two ways. You can use an air balloon, or you can use the new darkness special energy that gives darkness Pokemon less retreat cost. And in that way, you can switch between Hoopas, you can switch between other attackers. But Hoopa doing 90 for one darkness energy, that's a really good ROI on energy investment. Look for Hoopa to make a splash in this next format. Now, the number nine best card from Darkness Ablaze... I I'm sure I'm going to make somebody upset. I can already see the comments. <laughs> Centiscorch VMAX. Now, Centiscorch VMAX with its GMAX Centiferno for two colorless energy says this attack does 40 more damage for each fire energy attached to this Pokemon. You may attach a fire energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon after calculating damage for this attack. So you can see how a GMAX Centiferno can really build up the damage, hitting for these big, big numbers late in the game. With cards like Welder and Heat Factory and Fire Crystal, you can see how attaching from hand and building up the GMAX Centiferno can be an easy thing. However, 
Having 320 health as a VMAX and not one-shotting other VMAXs until later in the game, it seems like it will take too much time to get sent to Scorch VMAX, hitting the numbers that you need to hit. And for that reason, we have to leave sent to Scorch VMAX at number 9 on the top 10 Darkness Blaze cards. The number 8 card, or should I say cards, of Darkness Blaze is the Mad Party Suite. Now, the Mad Party Suite consists of Galarian Mr. Rhyme, Poltegeist, Bunnelby, and Dedenne, all having this Mad Party attack, all being able to attack for upwards of 300 damage for a single Twin Energy. Now, Mad Party is likely not going to be a strong set of cards in the standard format. We'll make for some good memes and we'll make for some good laughs. But its true power is going to shine in the expanded format, where it will likely take over for Night March of being the one prize O-Hit KO deck of choice. Look out for Mad Party in expanded, while still, you know, doing some fun things in the standard format. Number seven of our top 10 is the Big Bad Bird Decidui. With its forced camouflage ability, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by the attacks of your opponent's Pokemon V and Pokemon GX. That is absolutely stunning, an ability that we haven't seen for a while. Split Arrow, this attack does 20 damage to two of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Hitting for 90 damage and spreading damage like that is also a very reasonable attack for a Pokemon like this. Of course, you wish it did more, considering that it has to go up against these massive VMAX Pokemon. But we'll take what we can get. A usable attack on a wall such as this is enough to put Decidueye at the number 7 slot. Number six on the list of top 10 Darkness Blaze cards is Rose. Coming in here with the supporter, Rose says, choose up to two basic energy from your discard pile and attach them to one of your Pokemon VMAX. Then discard your hand. This is a super strong supporter that can power up just about any VMAX. We think about things like Dragapult. We think about things like Senta Scorch or Eternatus. All VMAXs that attack for two energy, being able to load them up from the discard pile is a huge benefit. And then discarding your hand is a very worthy downside. Now there are some ways to get around it, notably the new stadium that I'll talk about in just a second. But Rose is a very strong card. And with this format centering around the VMAX Pokemon, look for Rose to see significant play. Number five is Turbo Patch. Now, I, again, it might be a little bit too low, but Turbo Patch, I don't think is going to break the game quite in the way that people think it will. Turbo Patch seems very balanced with the way the game is going. Now, there are a lot of insanely strong basic Pokemon. Zacian comes to mind. But when you look at what Pokemon is trying to do in terms of building up these VMAX evolved Pokemon, Turbo Patch, I think, fits into that metagame very, very well. So Turbo Patch says, flip a coin. If heads, choose a basic energy card from your discard pile and attach it to one of your basic Pokemon, excluding Pokemon GX. Now, Turbo Patch, very strong, but with the VMAX Pokemon rising into prominence uh, as this Sword and Shield block goes on, I do not see Turbo Patch being as important as it maybe could have been last format. Now, Turbo Patch, still an amazing, amazing card, and that is why it is number five. Coming in at number four is Vika Volt V. Trainer Lock is back, baby. Paralyzing Bolt for two energy, 50 damage. Your opponent can't play any item cards from their hand during their next turn. And Super Zap Cannon, 190 for three energy. Discard two energy from this Pokemon. Vika Volt V, similar to Seismitoad, EX. Unfortunately for Vika Volt, there are two things that differentiate it from Seismitoad. The first one is that the energy cost is a little bit more difficult to get out. So electric and colorless. Now you can use things particularly in the expanded format. You know, after we get to post rotation, we won't have things like Thunder Mountain. We won't have things like Counter Gain. But those are two cards that you can look at in the expanded format to pair with Vika Volt V to make it a little bit easier to paralyzing bolt on the early turns. However, in the standard format, item lock is not anything to scoff at. Unfortunately, only doing 50 damage compared to these VMAXs. Like you look at an Eternatus V Max that has 340 health. You have to attack seven times. You have to attack seven times with a Vika Volt to knock out an Eternatus V Max. That's just a little bit too much. However, 
Item lock, still very good. And uh, this card should absolutely see play in the expanded format. That is where I think Vikavolt will make the biggest impact. However, look for it in the standard format as well to be a card to be reckoned with. Now, the number three card may surprise you. That's right, it's Eternatus VMAX. Now, if you want to know why I think Eternatus VMAX is not absolutely broken, you can check out this video right here. But Eternatus VMAX coming in with 340 health, one of the biggest VMAX Pokemon that we have seen. Infinity Zone is its ability. If all of your Pokemon on play are dark, you may now have up to eight dark Pokemon on your bench. You can't play any other type of Pokemon, so you can't play Dedenes, you can't play Orangaroos, you can't play Eldegoss, but there is this new card called Crobat V that is pretty good. So Dread End for 30 times, for two energy, a dark and a colorless says, this attack does 30 damage times the number of your darkness Pokemon. So you can see how the ability and the attack work in perfect harmony. Being able to do up to 270 for two energy is extremely busted. And so Eternatus gets the number three slot. Number two in the top 10 Darkness of Blaze cards is the Stadium Rose Tower. Once during each player's turn, that player may draw cards from their deck until they have three cards in their hand. Maybe saying, why do you think that this card is so good? Well, I think there is a dearth of viable stadiums. We look at a lot of uh, decks playing Chaotic Swell just because they need kind of a stadium. But you look at Rose Tower and the powerful effect that it has. This is a card that saw a ton of play when it was a Pokemon in a Ranguru. And now that we have it as a stadium, I still think that this card is absolutely broken. This is a card to watch out for. It may not seem so good, but this is the card that has kind of this utilitarian uh, use for it, that it could be used in almost every single deck for great effect. So Rose Tower comes in at number two for being just universally good. The final card from Darkness of Blaze that makes the number one slot on the top 10 list comes as no surprise and is also a very utilitarian card, good in almost every single deck, and that is Crobat V. Crobat V with 180 health, dark type attacker, has an ability, Knight Asset. Once during your turn, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to your bench, you may draw cards until you have six cards in hand. Now that sounds very, very familiar to another card called Shaman EX, which was a major player in every single format that it's ever been in. It uh, dominated the standard format when it was first released. It came back. It's still a major player in the expanded format. And now we add to that Shaman legacy with this Crobat V. The downside is that you cannot use more than one ability during your turn. So you can't play multiple Crobats down and gain up to six cards like you could with Shaman. However, with the amount of draw Pokemon that we have in our current standard format and the post-rotation format, Crobat V will be an almost staple. Now, it's not as good as Dedenne, granted, but as soon as Dedenne rotates, Crobat V is going to be everywhere. This thing is insane. Great, great Pokemon, and it makes the number one place on our top 10 list. So that is our top 10, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps me out and it makes this video so that other people can watch it. So if you like my content and you think maybe somebody else would too, go ahead and drop a subscribe. I would really appreciate it. So I'll catch you on the next video. Remember, good luck and also have fun.